Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today, you're going to be looking at our 2025 edition of how to set up Home Assistant on Proxmox using no scripts. So the first thing we're going to need to do is navigate to the Home Assistant website, the website that you see here in front of me in January of 2025. And here at the Home Assistant website, we're going to need to get a copy of the Home Assistant OS image for Proxmox. In order to do this, we're going to select Get Started, and then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of this page where it says Home Assistant on other OSs, and we're going to click View Tutorial. Right here, you can see we have a KVM slash Proxmox file. Let's go ahead and right click on it and select Copy Link Address. If you're using Windows or Linux and not a Mac, this terminology may be different, but it should still have a very same meaning with what you choose. Once we select that, we have the URL to download this image on our Proxmox server. Heading over to our Proxmox web interface, we can go ahead and select our server. Mine's going to be called PVE, and that is the default naming of your first server in your Proxmox dashboard or data center. So then you can go to select shell, and with your shell open, you're going to enter the command wget, and then paste that link address that you copied from the website. Pressing enter, you'll go ahead and download the file to your Proxmox server in your root directory. Now, if we enter ls, we can see that we have our file right here. Go ahead, select the name of the file, and copy it. With this copied, then type unxz and paste that file name in. Pressing enter, this will decompress our file to a cute cow2 image. So this time when we enter ls, you'll see our qcow2 image display when this decompression has finished. All right, so now we can close this shell window out and back at our Proxmox web interface, we need to create a VM or at least a VM shell where we can put our image into that we downloaded from the Home Assistant website. To do that, I find the easiest way is to come up here to the top where it says Create VM and click on this window. We're going to give ours a name and then we're going to hit Next. Now, if you don't have this extra information below, it's because your advanced box isn't checked. You won't need it, but I like to keep it displayed for other projects. We will want to take note for later on of what this VM ID number is of, and mine's going to be 112 for future reference. Pressing next at OS, we're going to select do not use any media and press next. Here at BIOS, we're going to select UEFI, and then we're going to select our EFI drive. Mine's going to be local LVM. I'm also going to uncheck pre-enroll keys and then press next. Here for our disk, we're going to be using the Home Assistant disk image, so we can go ahead and press delete and remove the disk image. For CPU cores, let's give it two cores. That's the minimum required for Home Assistant by the Home Assistant website. And for type, I'm going to change my CPU to host. This is not a required step, but I do find that I get a little better performance. Now, depending on if you have clusters or other things going in your Proxmox server set, then you may want to choose a different option, but that is an advanced decision. Moving on, I'm going to press next. And memory, the bare minimum memory that's suggested from Home Assistant is two gigs. This also happens to be the minimum memory that Proxmox defaults to. We could set it lower if we wanted to, but we have no need to. Pressing next, we need to configure our network setting. Today I'm going to be using VMBR0, which is the default configuration for Proxmox, but remember to set your bridge as needed if you have other requirements for your network. Pressing next, we're asked to confirm these settings and we can press finish. Proxmox will then make our VM as you see it appearing right here. We now need 
to head back to our shell and enter some more commands. We're going to want to once again copy and paste, or copy rather, our file name of our image that we downloaded. And then we're going to enter QM import disk as one word, then our VMID number, which mine's going to be 112. Then we're going to paste that name in and we're going to enter local LVM. Now, if you have ZFS or something, you might be entering local ZFS or something to that matter. You're going, you're going to want to enter whatever name appears right here for your storage drive for your VMs. Now we can go ahead and press enter. And if you didn't make a typo like I did by forgetting the A in local, this command will run successfully. This command will pause when it reaches 100% and you want to wait until it says it's successful. Now that it says it's successful, we can once again close our shell window and head back to our Proxmox web interface. This time we want to select our VM template that we created or shell or whatever you want to refer to it as, and then select hardware. At the hardware window, let's select the unused disk zero, press edit, and then hit add. This will add the drive or disk image that we just imported into the VM to the VM's configuration file. Now there's one last step we need to do before we go ahead and start this VM to begin using it. And that's to select options, boot order, and edit. Now you simply can select this disk and everything will work fine. But I like to go ahead and unselect the CD-ROM and network because that allows us to have a faster boot process. Pressing OK, we can go ahead and start up this VM at this point. And then we can select console in the web interface and we'll see Home Assistant boot for the first time. Now when, now when Home Assistant has booted for the first time, you'll get a window that looks like this and you're ready to log into the Home Assistant web interface. We do want to take note of our IP address because that's what we're going to do to log in, as well as this port 8123. In our web browser, let's create a new tab, enter the IP address, and follow it with the port 8163, and press Enter. Sorry, 8123. So once you've entered the IP address and port 8123, you'll get a window that looks like this. And Home Assistant will begin installing or doing its magic behind the scenes to get the app ready for you to run. I will return to you at the point of the next steps. Now that Home Assistant has finished its automatic configuration for its first boot, we can go ahead and click Create New Smart Home, enter our information, press Create Account, give it our street address if we so choose. I won't be doing this today. I'm just going to click Next. We can give it our country, press Next. I won't be activating any of these sliders. But if you wish, you can, and you can press next. It did automatically find my Synology DSM on my network, so it's asking if it's okay to add that device. We can hit finish, and now we're into Home Assistant. There's other great videos on YouTube about how to continue on with Home Assistant from this point. So I'm going to conclude this video here. I hope you enjoyed it and you'll consider liking, sharing, and subscribing, as well as you're now able to have Home Assistant running on a VM in Proxmox. As always, have a good night.